Okay. Well, I'll call each person if they want to have any uh, amendments to the agenda. Cool. All right. Good morning. If we could all be seated, please. I'd like to call this meeting to order. It is January 9th, 2019, 10 a.m. Uh, I would like to start the meeting with uh, with a with a comment. Um, no disrespect to Miss Gold, um, but I uh, or any other previous uh, commissioners. I take our Pledge of Allegiance and all pledges of this nation very seriously. So I like to slow it down just a little bit and uh, it's a little bit more meaningful to me. So I would appreciate that. Join me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Thank you. All right. Do we have any? Um, I have a couple items yes. first, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Boyce. I need a little patience here on this new seating arrangement. Okay, it's kind of nice. But you remind me of my grade school principal, <laughs> and I had a special chair right next to him good part of my career in, in, in grade school. So. Did he have a ruler? Yes. <laughs> so today is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Uh, we lost in, in 2018 151 uh, police officers in uh, a 12 month period that were killed in the line of duty. Uh, today, today uh, right now we've lost about four for 2019, so we're hoping that number goes way down. So in a National Appreciation Day, uh, the tradition is you offer to serve the local guys breakfast. I offered, but they, polite, they heard about my cooking and they politely passed. So thank you very much. Thank you for letting me express that. National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. All right, do we have any adoptions or amendments to the agenda? County Administrator? I'd like to add a uh, discussion for non-representative uh, COLA staff wage increases for the non-representative staff. And if I could, I'd like to have that earlier because I'd like uh, the sheriff to be part of that discussion and I don't want to spend his time here. Okay. Can we do that as, um, let me see, right after the awards? Uh, I'd recommend right after the consent agenda, basically just doing it okay. as the equivalent of you know, 5A, right. and then the other one would be 5B or something like that, so. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. So we're going to make that 5A then? Yep. And then uh, direction of labor negotiation will be 5B. Correct. All right, any other uh, amendments to the agenda? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. So it... Um, the last meeting we had a exec session for advice of council and were directed to proceed uh, as discussed in the exec session and on this meeting at item K there are two executive sessions um, and I just wanted to check with the county administrator the 13 was to talk about uh, deliberations with labor negotiations were we going to need that executive session anymore no Mr. Schroeder okay nope. so we would eliminate number 13 in number 14, um, I don't think we need to do number 14 either, but I would like to add um, two items. One, and I'll pass these around. Is that is, for the executive session? No, we're not doing the exec session. So oh, we're eliminating none at the all. exec session. The whole thing. Okay. And uh, two items. One would be an emergency ordinance to repeal ordinance 1701 and thereby eliminating the county administrator position. So that would be an item, and that would come up near the end. In other words, um, the, the idea is that Mr. Schroeder would uh, run this meeting until you 
did a reading on that. Now it's an emergency ordinance, and um, when it's an emergency ordinance, it can be adopted in a single reading, effective uh, on adoption if it's unanimous. But if not, like any of our ordinances, it needs two readings. So we'll just have to wait and see how the votes come out on that. This is only to add it to the agenda. It's not a vote on the item itself. And then as part of that would be approval of a termination agreement, excuse me, a separation agreement with the county administrator, um, which um, is, I think, did you get a copy of that with those handouts as well? I don't think that was included. Where are we putting that on the agenda? Yeah, the separation agreement oh, is in the handout. Good. You have a separation okay, agreement yes. there, and then here's the emergency ordinance one. So I think I've got them got mixed back. up. So, right, so repealing would be first, and then the separation agreement would be second because the separation agreement is based on a vote of you repealing. Want to have more of these? Yeah, I need one more. Um, yes. Thank you. There we go. So I just ask that those be added to the end of the agenda today. So are you going to put that before presentations? Yes. Um, no, it would be at the end of the agenda. Oh, very end. Okay. Yes. And yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, how about we do it after updates? Okay. So why don't we make that as K? Right, just not executive session. Right, it's just not an executive session. Okay. All right, next we have, uh, I'm sorry, are there any other adoptions or amendments to the agenda? Mr. Chair? Yes. A couple here. Um, we have, oh gosh, is it item, the TLT tax, I think it's item four or five. We'll have it right here. Anyway, I would like to postpone that for, uh, till our 23rd meeting, excuse, yes, 23rd meeting. Um, I don't want anybody to interpret that, that I don't have full enthusiasm. I'm just not quite ready to enthusiastically uh, recommend it to the voters. Uh, there is no urgency here, um, and I certainly support and uh, Curry Friends and the Fair Board. I'm just not ready uh, on a couple minor things that I want clarified, and I just simply have not had the time, Mr. Chair, to really follow through. This is a huge thing for the county, so I'd like to table that or continue it till. Uh, January 23rd. And then I have one other also. What item is that? Uh, seven and eight. Do you want both seven and eight eliminated or continued? My uh, agenda is not coming up here. Forgive me. Thank you. Yes, F7 and 8. Appreciate that. Can we do that on the 16th instead of the 23rd? That would give us a week. That's up to the board. I would rather have two weeks, but uh, we're pretty loaded on the on the, you know seven days from now. But uh, I'm open to. I would prefer sooner than later. Okay. Um, move things along. So um, if you if you'd be willing to to uh, go on the uh, to remove it for today and move it to the uh, to the meeting on the 16th, I would be uh, more in favor of that. Let's go. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Fine here. Yeah, I will, um, Chair, I, I will say your time is, is still fine. Um, in order to approve and get it on the ballot, I think my initial, I think my initial drop deadline to have the ballot language March. submitted would be the 20th of February, if I, if I count my dates it's a, correct. It's a, I think it's the first Tuesday in March, but I could be incorrect also. Which for which for me, me I, I just kind of, in my mind, I would I, I would have you finish this by the 20th of February, so you have time built in in case there's questions on the ballot initiative. So you do have time to do that. Won't affect it. Thank you. So this is for the second reading, okay, and the in, implement, in, implementing as well. All right. We're One more, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, re I need to be reappointed as delegate to both AOC and AOC Board of Directors. Uh, the AOCC, uh, BLM counties, uh, that's a board of only 12 representing 18 counties. It's a very important spot for the county. I actually serve on eight different boards, uh, but like I say, this is probably number one, and this is what helped us get that $1.7 million it built a few months ago. 
and uh, I put it as my highest priority. I just need a kind of an official written document from the board that uh, I am that delegate, because I, I do serve on the board now. I don't and, have a problem with that. And I actually just got the call yesterday that they need that updated, so I would have had it on the agenda had I had it a few days ago. I have no problem with it either. Thank you. Thanks for your doing it. All righty. Next, we have public comments. Did you want a motion to oh. approve the agenda? Yeah, I'm sorry. As I'm sorry. We need, is that just, a, I think I make a consensus. A motion. Consensus is fine. Yes. Well, but it, there were okay. other amendments there. I make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I have a second? Yes. <coughs> second, thank you. Any further comments? The question? Aye. 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 All right, next we have public comments. First is Lucy Labonte. Good morning, Commissioners. Lucy Labonte, 98645 Agnes Road, for the record. And um, I'm going to read the League of Women Voters position uh, adopted in 1999 on how we govern ourselves in Curry County. And it was reviewed after the last home rule um, ballot measure and um, upheld. The members did not want to change it. I also wanted just to say I'm sorry that you removed the transient logic tax second reading. I understand the emergency ordinance concern, but um, the second there were people here wanting to testify on that today on this stormy day. So I'm sorry the second reading was removed. It could have been read and the comments could have been taken. Um, oh, and one more little thing before I start with my league hat on, um, I noticed that Oregon Coastal Zone Management Association membership is on the um, agenda. I encourage you to join that group. I didn't know they were still functioning, but I was chair of that for a while. And um, I noticed it was on the Soil Water Conservation District um, radar too. It is all the ports, counties, some of the cities and some of the soil water conservation districts on the coast and they all meet um, they used to meet quarterly and discuss coastal issues and it was a very important group for getting our ports funding and dredged so I, I really do encourage you to look very seriously at joining that group okay back to the League of Women Voters I'm the president of the League of Women Voters of Curry County and the League of Women Voters of Curry County supports a county government led by three duly elected commissioners who follow state laws on budget and county rules on personnel, personnel evaluation. Alterna alternative sources of funding should be explored. Efforts should be made to streamline advisory bodies as to function membership and training. The League of Women Voters of Curry County believes that the Board of Commissioners and all appointed powers should follow the adopted personnel rules and report to people that eva evaluation has been completed. A program evaluation procedure should be <coughs> excuse me, adopted and implemented on an annu annual basis. We recommend that the chair of the Board of Commissioners shall make a state of the county report to the people at the beginning of each calendar year. The League of Women Voters of Curry County stresses the importance of adherence to state balanced budget law, county fees, and services should reflect the true cost. The League of Women Voters of Curry County supports combining advisory bodies with similar focus, actively recruiting members, and providing training for them. The League of Women Voters of Curry County believes all elected county officials should be nonpartisan. And I wanted I wanted to just take note when I was reading this this morning, I went over your agenda and you don't have a state of the county address today. Actually, we did last time. Oh, you did it in December? Two, two days oh. ago. Oh, two days ago. Okay, because I looked on that agenda and I didn't see it either. It was there. Okay, good. I'm glad you did it. It's usually the out, outgoing commissioner does it. <laughs> right. It was started by um, Commissioner Hanscom, I believe, years and years ago. And I know that during the Oles Roberts as it was dropped so I'm happy that you're still doing it thank you thank you David Barnes thank you if you don't mind I'd rather speak later when you repeal 1701 that'll thank be you. fine Thank you. 
All right, next we're going to go to D on the agenda, which is awards. The first one we have scheduled is a five-year service award for Mr. Gary Carter. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Good morning. Commissioners. Uh, Richard Christensen, Curry County Roadmaster, here with uh, our five-year service award recipient, Gary Carter. Just wanted to introduce him. He's uh, one of our top operators. He responds all hours of the night, all weather, storms, no matter how bad it is. He's one of the first people to arrive on the job site and to the facility. Also, he takes great pleasure in training our new employees with CDL licenses, and he's a, a big part of our team. But I just want to introduce you to him and give him his five-year service award. I just want to. <laughs> I just want to let you know that I happen to know Mr. Carter rather well, and uh, okay. his, his service to the county is very, very admirable. And it is my honor to call him my friend. Thank you, Thank you. Gary. <laughs> Next, we have a 30-year service award for Sergeant Hensley. 20. Or 20 year. I'm sorry. You've been here I'm sorry. I got to put the glasses days. back You're on. All right. Now. 20. <laughs> we went. Wow. We're going to live long enough to see 30 Still years. Still got hair at 30 years. That's good. <laughs> good morning, Commissioners. Sheriff John Ward. We are here today to recognize Joel for his 20 years of service with the Curry County. Joel started out. I can't believe it's 20 years already um, as a corrections deputy and uh, then moved into patrol. During his patrol stint, he became a detective for about three years. And then uh, uh, when I took over as sheriff in 2014, I saw the value in Joel uh, a lot more than just as a patrol deputy. I made him in charge of our jail, made him the jail commander and uh, boosted him up to sergeant. I'd boost him up a little bit more today, but we have an issue with, with uh, compression issues that i, I got to deal with first. I also want to recognize his wife, Katie, in the audience, who's here to support and put up with all of Joel's shenanigans for the last 20 years. <laughs> uh, so I um, appreciate that. Um, Joel's very valuable to us. He, he takes on additional projects that um, it's, could be overwhelming for most. Uh, recently, he's working with the City of Brookings and the Portland State University for uh, dispatch consolidation to see, you know, where we go from here. Uh, but the biggest thing is working on the tower projects, uh, signing for the towers to uh, uh, deal with the, not so much the towers, but the, the microwaves and the equipment that we have on those, those towers. Uh, working very closely with Day Wireless, making sure that, you know, we get our communications up and running again uh, as soon as possible. So uh, I couldn't be more prouder to call him my sergeant and my friend. So, Joe. Hey, hey. <laughs> I don't want to hold you on all the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Better get her in the picture. Thank you for your service, Joel. Thank you. And he's, um, he's got a speech. I do. I wrote a four-pager, but I'll save it for later. <laughs> um, in all honesty, I'd uh, like to thank Curry County for taking a risk on a 23-year-old in 1998, um, December, a uh, young family at that time. Um, I uh, really appreciate Sheriff Ward and everything he's done for me. Um, he's allowed me opportunities to supervise uh, actual um, multiple divisions, uh, dispatch as well, and um, hopefully get us on a, um, uh, a path that we're um, excited to be uh -huh. on. A lot of uh, positive energy going on right now at the sheriff's office for doing a lot with a little. Um, but all I would really want to recognize Katie Hensley, my wife, because, well, without her, I would have no hair. I'd be on so many blood pressure meds, it'd be unbelievable. And I probably honestly couldn't do this job. Um, the law enforcement in itself is a enigma a lot of people don't understand. Um, she's uh, changed with me. She's allowed me to... Uh, uh, go leave all those hours a night, get the phone calls in the middle of the night, make you wonder why we do this. Um, but she stood by me the entire time. So I'd like to thank my wife. <laughs> I 
I'd, uh, Thanks, Joel. I'd also like to say, as I've said many times publicly, I can't understand everything that you go through being, uh, being a sheriff. But I am very much pro-military, fire, and law enforcement. And to see you guys, I've always said, running into a building that people is burning or people are shooting at, we're all running out and you guys are running in. We do appreciate your service, sir. All right, let's move on to the consent agenda. Uh, first item uh, is number three for the uh, Chick Chip Rock purchase. Mr. Chair, I think we just need to approve the entire consent agenda. We just did, didn't we? No. no. So you you so, approved amendments to the agenda. You basically, oh, you, okay. you entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda if any items are removed. Okay. I move that we approve the consent agenda as written with items three and four. Louise, go ahead. Uh, Louise Kallstrom, County Accountant. I just wanted to make a quick comment about the um, proposed uh, budget calendar. I just want to make sure um, before we adopt it that there's no conflicts on any of these dates for anybody, and I just don't want to change it again after we adopt it. So. Can we wait till the 16th? I need to look at my calendar more closely. Is that going to be a problem? Um, no, I, I'm going to be continuing on as if it's already adopted. Yeah, go ahead and continue, but there may be a conflict for me. I'm not sure. Okay, I just have so to do check. you want to remove it from the consent agenda for this Can time? we do it for now? Okay. Would that be? I didn't even think of that. Then we'll put it on again on the, si on the 16th there. Yeah, I didn't get home right. until late last night and forgot all about looking at my calendar. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Where was that one? Okay, so that would be with the removal of, I'm going to change my motion uh, to approve the consent agenda with just item three only, which would be the chip rock purchase. Okay, gotcha. And then we will postpone the other <coughs> proposed budget calendar until the 16th. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? A question? Aye. 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 Good job, Roadmaster. Thank you very much. Public partner, or public private partnership. Very nice. All right, then we're going to move on to, uh, to the regular agenda. And direction on labor negotiation negotiation with Union 206, Mr. Schroeder. Um, actually, Chair, I would like to go to the non-rep wage adjustment that we added to the agenda as uh, agenda item 5A. You are correct. I'm sorry. On law enforcement. Sorry. <laughs> you do agree. How do you get that? Uh, exit, yeah, exit out top right. There we are. Okay, Clark Schroeder, County Administrator. Uh, we're basically at the point where we've had two unions settle in, uh, in our county this uh, past few months. We've had the Teamsters have settled for 2.75% plus uh, language in the contract and uh, the SEI union settled for 2.13% plus uh, health insurance also. And we, we've come to the point now where union employees are earning more than their supervisors in the sheriff's department. This is called compression. If a sheriff is if the sergeant is promoted to lieutenant, they would have to take a pay cut. This will likely happen in other departments as we go forward if we don't adjust this. Uh, county administrators recommending a 2.5% increase for non-represented employees and a $100 a month county increase in health insurance contribution, which is in line with the union settlements. 
Uh, my recommendation would be the effective date would be yesterday, January 8th, which would be the start of a new payroll period. The unions, as you're well aware, we retroactively went back to July 1st. But since these individuals and the non-reps are not in a union, we, haven't, we didn't start negotiations at that time. My recommendation would be to do it on the 8th. So in the handouts today, um, and I gave all you handouts uh, yesterday, so you had time to review them and look at them. I will just put them up here just for uh, the audience, just to have a, a brief view of them. Uh, we have um, the master payroll, which is enacted by the budget committee this past summer, and uh, the effects of both the recommendations on a yearly basis. So when we're looking at the master payroll sheets on the, the spreadsheets coming up here momentarily, you'll notice the amounts are on a yearly basis. Um, I will state that the master payroll is not updated every time an employee is hired, leaves, transfers, or promoted. It's a, it's a static worksheet that's adopted by the budget committee. And so when you look on the master payroll, you'll see individuals who are no longer here or have changed positions. And the reason that is is because uh, the, the payroll is actually sits inside of our accounting system. And so that's where, that's where it resides. So the numbers that you see are, are kind of the, more of the general effects as if you were enacting it from, uh, from the previous um, the budget committee recommendation. So I went, we went back and actually uh, Julie, Swift, uh, Julie Swift had put this together. And, um, and so th these are, we have these uh, non-reps, Teamsters, SEI, farther on the page, which the audience can't see, is the uh, road department and then elected officials. The reason the road department, uh, going forward, the road department will be separated because they'll be in the 206 union, which we're gonna be talking about next concerning the negotiations on that. The reason the road department is broken out separate and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Swift, is that uh, in the past, uh, they did get what the Teamsters got for a few years without being part of the team, uh, 223 Teamsters, I shall correct that, without being part of the union. And then they, uh, uh, somewhere along the lines, they dropped out of it. So they have a slightly different path as far as historical COLAs. So with that, we basically go back to 2009, and you can see we have COLAs and steps, and then uh, 2010, 11, we got 11, 12, we got, you know, com coming forward, you can see over the course of a, you know, this nine year period, there really hasn't been an awful lot of parity. And when you look at the unions, you, you know, I would, I would encourage you, the reason we're here is you'll look across these two, these two lines and you can see 18, 19 increase. Uh, here we had step increases, which are 5% or two and a half percent. Here, the sheriff's union got some. So, um, so with that, um, so with that, I have a multi-tab spreadsheet here. This is going to be hard to see the multi-tab spreadsheet. Have you done this before, Julie? Sure. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's hard to see. Going from the paper copies, basically, you have you have the uh, the payroll as is, as it was adopted by the budget committee at one point eight. Five four million dollars for this group of employees. If we add the two and a half percent increase for the cola, it's a thirty-eight thousand nine hundred thirty-three dollar increase on an annual basis. That would be, um, and ha so half of that would be the equivalent of basically half. So it'd be at uh, you know, and then the third page in your packet, you basically have the hundred dollar uh, increase in county contribution to health insurance, which is sixty four thousand dollars over the course of a year. So, and that's the total cost. So you can see that title of that page is wage increase plus insurance increase is sixty four thousand one hundred thirty three dollars. It would basically be about half of that. So the recommendation would be that this would be about a thirty two thousand dollar adjustment to this year's budget. Because that's half a year is what you're saying. That's correct, yes. Okay. And uh, what, what we're doing with these uh, union increases 
and we're waiting till we settle the 206 union we will the miss Callstrom will do a supplemental budget to basically they'll move money um, into the wage categories for these different departments because the budget committee did not in, did not budget for any increases for any of the unions and so this will just be in line we're going to wait till we get done with that originally i was going to wait until the 206 union negotiations were completed but uh, given the fact that we've run across this wage compression issue i feel it's untenable to continue with this operation and so i basically am recommending that you adopt this uh, per the administrator's recommendation and then we'll continue to negotiate the 206 union but chances are when they see the pattern of what the non-reps and the other unions have got i don't think we're uh, tipping our hands, so to speak, in any fashion, they'll be detrimental to the county negotiations. So with that, I'd, 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 uh, I'd direct the council to move to adjust non-rep wages 2.5% and increase county insurance contribution to by $100 effective January 8th. Hmm? I just have one comment, um, Julie Swift, payroll and HR. Um, one of the things that's been happening you know, over the last several years is we've had to hire non-represented employees outside of the salary range that the position is set in. Had these increases been, uh, coal has been given over the years, we wouldn't be running into that issue. So for instance, a building official is normally set at a range 11. Had there been increases on that range 11 over the years, we wouldn't have had to put him at a range 14 to get the money that was required for the position. So that's that's part of what's happening with this non-rep no cola is we're running into having to hire people outside of the salary range that the position is set in so i'm looking for a motion all right i'll make, I'll make an, a motion to uh to adopt the uh the budget increases for the uh as stated by uh, County Administrator Schroeder. I think it was 33,000 and... 32. I'll second that. Any further question or uh, comments? A question? Aye. 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 All right, we'll go to 5B now. Now that I'm back online, direct uh, direction on labor negotiation for Union 206, Mr. Schroeder. Okay. Curry County, as I, as I just reiterated earlier, Curry County has been in negotiations with the Teamsters 206 Union, which is the uh, road crew. Attorney Bruce Bischoff was the lead negotiator along with myself and John Huddle as uh, sitting that second chair with the negotiations for the previous union contracts. Mr. Bischoff no longer is engaged with Curry County, and the question before the board today should the county engage a union negotiation attorney or have staff finish the talks without an attorney? We uh, have been working, uh, just for a status update, the 206 union, we basically have been working on the language of the contract, and I would say we're 90% of the way there as far as the, the working language, but we have not done any of the uh, financial part. So that needs to still be negotiated. And um, one of the options for the county board to consider would be to, uh, uh, which I made a recommendation back in June actually when I got here was um, to engage Pierre Robert from LGPI, which would be able to help and support the county with negotiations. Uh, he earns, a, he bills out at $190 an hour plus expenses. His expenses are $95 an hour for travel and uh, actual hotels or whatever. Um, if Mr. Rovera was brought on board, I, it would be my recommendation that staff would be part of the negotiating team. I would recommend that you would have uh, uh, Council Huddle, Callstrom, and Swift in, in with Robert. In my conversations with the um, representative from 206 yesterday, he is looking to try to schedule a, a one or two day negotiating session on site here sometime within the next 30 days. Again, this is a union that uh, you know st was voted into existence for Curry County April, March, somewhere in there, and so the 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 effects of this are going to go back to <coughs> July one, and the longer we postpone this, the longer it's going to be a problem. 
and in, in addition, I think it's important for the county board to weigh in because we did receive notice also from the SEIU union. Um, we got this last month in, in, uh, in accordance with Article 28, Terms of Agreement, Collective Bargaining between Curry County and SEI Union 503. We are giving notice of our intent to reopen midterm negotiations of Articles 19 and 21. And so um, you might remember we just settled the SEI Union in, I don't know, August, somewhere in there. And the, the uh, Articles 19 and 21 would be basically, you know, the equivalent of wages and our health care. And it would be the recommend, my recommendation that you enter in negotiations with the same negotiating team that you're going to be doing the 206, giving staff direction to do this. And you start negotiating with SEIU because um, I would prefer to have you go into the budget cycle knowing what your wages are going to be for starting in July because uh, it's kind of put staff and the financial situation in the county not having those in place and now we're having to go backwards so I, I would recommend that we go forward with SEIU uh, negotiations also. There's Ms. questions, Ms. Gold. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Number one, uh, where is this uh, legal counsel located? Where does he live? LGPI I think is out of Salem. Out of Salem. And yes. Question number two, would it be possible to do both unions at the same time so you don't have to pay for the travel time? Um, it might be hard to do that just because the, the, the 206 union might be a little more complicated because it's a brand new contract and uh, you know the union, uh, Corey Finnegan, I think is that guy's name, he basically has said he wants two full days to do this. He would rather get two full days and just knock it out. Mm -hmm. um, your question is, would you have other staff? Because SEIU staff that's going to be coming down to negotiate, they're from out of town also. They're from Medford, from Medford, so they have to come here and stay also. So um, I don't know. I mean, if you were able to get, say, three days, bam, 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 do it. So that you're not paying all the travel time. Because that adds up. Well, well and I, I guess part of that, part of that uh, you know, um, Commissioner Gold would be is, is if the board wants to have a, you know, a negotiator, union negotiator on staff to come with us. So that, that's your main question right now. So that, you know, we, the strategies we can talk about, we will enter into um, executive session at some point with your, with your negotiation teams to talk about your strategies. This is basically what what is your team going to consist of, right. and so that I want I would like to some discussion and uh, <coughs> on that. Briefly, do we have the resources here to do it in house? I mean, are, is it do we have the staffing to do to do negotiations in house rather than hiring an outside firm? I I believe we do. As um, do I. I guess I would ask maybe Mr. Huddle to weigh in on that. Council Huddle. Thank you. And I've just heard anecdotally before my time, and uh, Julie Swift, actually, I'd like to bring her up to the podium, but my understanding is that we had a commissioner, county council, the head of the department who uh, was primarily affected, as well as the personnel officer, but maybe you could tell us how we've done this in the past. We've done it both ways. Okay. We've had, we've used um, outside labor negotiators as well as just doing our own team. Um, the outside negotiator is basically to be the lead voice on the team um, and then we would have we had my position council usually a department head in the past we did have a commissioner although it's been recommended not to have a commissioner on the team because they are ultimately approving the contract so you know we've done it both ways we've had LGPI represent us we had a representative from Oregon School Boards Association be our representative we had Mark Wolf from local government law group a couple years ago. So it's it's really up to the board <coughs> how you want to do it. I think we have the ability to to do it without, but it's also uh, when you have an expert doing it or helping you out, it really I think it makes a difference. Well, is there a way we could put them possibly on a retainer that if we have a question we could call and ask? Well, we can always consult with LGPI because we are members of that group already. So there we go. So, um, Commissioner Boyce, local government personnel institute. 
which now is actually under the League of or Oregon Cities. It was a, a group um, a group formed by AOC and LOC, and there's been some uh, upheaval in the structure lately, so right now it's under L just LOC. Commissioner Boyce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm glad Mr. Schroeder asked uh, Council Huddle, and I may have a specific question here in a minute. I've spent a little time on the phone with uh, Mr. Robert, and uh, he's very well respected around the state. He's reasonable. Um, he is very experienced. Um, and I'm hoping we don't need him on a real steady basis for 2019, but I, I sense that we probably are going to need him. So I'd like a chance to get to know him a little better, all of us, as far as that goes. Um, I'm not saying we can't do it in-house. Uh, and I didn't catch Mr. Huddle's answer on that fully, but um, just very interested in what your approach might be. And another thing about Mr. Peer, he doesn't have any connections with any of us, I presume, uh, as commissioners, uh, which was a past issue. So, Mr. Huddle, I would like to just defer to you again. If, if, and if you want a more specific question, I can do that. <laughs> so, I asked Julie Swift up here for how it was done, where she came from, or, you know, how it was done here in the past, excuse me, and she mentioned it's been a, a bunch of different ways. Um, I'm used to having staff do it, and then if we get into a particular loggerheads or, you know, sticky issue, you dial up your outside legal counsel like a Pierre Robert and, you know, ha have them on an ad hoc basis but not have them be on every single item in, in every meeting. So I'm used to a culture where the staff did it. Uh, we did not have elected officials involved. Um, the interesting part there is we were actually criticized by one of our unions for not having elected official involved. So uh, there's, it's almost like you can't win sometimes. But, but my, what I'm used to is staff does it and they, they only time the elected officials are involved is in the exec session where they're providing the policy directions. To the negotiating team once a team's established, but I, I'm I'm comfortable with staff teams doing it and then consulting with outside counsel on an as-needed basis. Commissioner Gold, I'm going to have to agree with not having a commissioner on the bargaining team because it really does color your vote when it when it comes down to it. Because I was part of the bargaining team and yeah, totally agree with that. Commissioner Boyce. So as I stated, I'd, I'd like a chance to get to know him a little bit better and see how that might prepare us, yeah, for 2019. So I'm ready to make a motion just to direct staff to go ahead and, and uh, have him come down to finish the negotiations, or at least be a part of it. And $185 an hour, that's half what we were paying Bischoff. So I think that uh, it's a rough call, tough call, but I think that's our, that certainly would be my preference. So that's so my motion. Are you looking for a motion today, or did you want to go through executive session to do that? No, I am. Um, so on your AGRS, I have a, uh, I have your uh, couple motions. One motion: move to direct staff to finish negotiations without outside attorney, or two: move to direct staff to work with Pierre Robert from LGBI to finish negotiations. And I guess you could probably break that into two separate. Um, you know, listening to the discussion, I guess I would correct my uh, motion to say move to direct staff to work with Pierre Robert on an odd on an ad needed basis to finish the negotiations so basically have him on retainer you know and like uh, Council Huddle had said we get to a loggerhead we get something we can't get through we call the guy up or we dial in uh, just like you dialed in Bruce to executive sessions you basically maybe that your first executive session um, you basically have Pierre call in and staff, you guys meet together and kind of give direction. So that, that logistics-wise, your next step is going to be you're going to schedule an executive session, and you're going to you're going to give guidance to the, your negotiating team, and then we, your negotiating team, is going to schedule with the you know Corey Finnegan <coughs> from the 206 union, and they're going to physically be here to do this type of work. But staff need guidance to say what what kind of uh, leeway are you going to give them to do this so we're not looking for that guidance today no we're not no 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 I, I'm talking about logistics and yep. so, so logistics of this is you basically would you know I would recommend that you make a motion to direct staff to work with Pierre Robert 
on an ad need basis um, and start the negotiating process. That basically would mean we will, if once that motion is done and passed, we will put on the schedule on an executive session to meet with you and with Pierre on the phone to say, here's where we're at and we'll package all this stuff up and I will hand, I will hand my information off today. By the end of today, I'll hand it off to Huddle and to Ms. Swift to make sure they have all the information that I have concerning the 206 and along with the SEIU union. Mr. Boyce. Thank you again. Um, as I said, I spent time with him on the phone, so I'm not really inclined to change my motion. I'd like to have him come down and help finish the negotiations, and that hopefully again would set us up for down the road negotiations. So you want a motion to bring him, bring uh, Mr. Bishop down? Not Bishop. I'm not Bishop. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Robert. 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 Down. Uh, down. Uh, now. Yes. To deal with this. Do I have a second? For lack of a second, the motion dies. I so move to bring Robert Pierre or whatever his last name is down and as as an ad needed basis, we can phone in and get the necessary uh, advice that we need. And have a county staff. Have county staff take care of the uh, negotiations. Do I have a second? I'll make a second. Any further discussion? I'd like to say um, I, I agree with Mr. Boyce that we need to have a relationship with Mr. Robert, and I think it's it's time it's it's best to take small steps um, to have him come in as needed on this. For me, is um, is is a good way to start it. I I, I agree with Council Huddle that our staff um, should be the first people that we delegate to look into this and move it forward. Um, and again, uh, relying on. Your, your comments and his expertise, we can call him and bring him in as needed. Any further comments? A question? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> All right, next, uh, next item on the agenda is department head meeting, commissioner schedule. Mr. Schroeder. Curry County has department head meetings the second Tuesday of each month with possible fourth Tuesday meeting if needed. We have had a rotating schedule of commissioners attend these meetings as no two commissioners can attend at the same time due to open meeting violations. With that in your packet, you will see the proposed schedule, which obviously can be switched around if people are on vacation or they're not gonna be here for a month or whatever, but uh, this is a proposed schedule and the next meeting I, uh, um, we would have had a meeting yesterday on the 8th. I canceled that department ed meeting due to the uncertainty of the administrator's position. So the next meeting for the department heads will be on January 22nd with, with chair or with uh, commissioner gold in attendance. With that, I would seek a motion to adopt commissioner schedule for department head meetings. Mr. Boyce. Yeah, it, there's not any need. And again, it's a wrong read. I want the public to know where we are in the open public meeting laws. Once again, um, you know, it seems complicated, but it really isn't. Uh, I've got to know so many commissioners around the state and they, nobody interprets that uh, open public meetings law as does Curry County or at least part of Curry County. And that is uh, the silly notion that you can't be under the same roof at the same time outside of a board meeting. Nobody else operates that way. It's, it's, it's horribly impractical. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's almost to the point of being silly. So um, there's benefit to that. And I, I just want the public to know that by us being on our honor, any two commissioners, any public f officials for that matter, um, it, is, it is really simple. Uh, you, you serve with integrity and uh, it, it, you, you fulfill your obligation and, and uh, j you just don't discuss business. You just don't. And that's the way the other commissioners operate. Ms. Gold? I'd just like to ask Council Huddle, what are your uh, 
feelings on this matter. Probably more than feelings, what's legal, what's not legal. Well, thank you. Um, and Commissioner Boyce summarized the, uh, you know, the position of Curry County that any two commissioners under the same roof is a meeting. And that's really not my position. So I don't know where that position is coming from. But essentially, it's when two commissioners deliberate or gather information towards county business. And my experience is the information that's discussed in the department head meetings uh, is county business. A lot of times it's going over agenda items or talking about items that would go on an agenda. So um, I believe there is a risk that uh, two commissioners at a department head meeting uh, could be considered as obtaining information or deliberating on information that constitutes county business. And so I, I urge caution in having more than one commissioner at that kind of a meeting uh, at the same time. So I, I would, I think it creates um, a lot of issues and a lot of ability for people to accuse us of wrongdoing. And I, I prefer to stay out of that kind of position. You say, if I may, Go you ahead. say it creates a lot of issues? Uh, it creates one large issue uh, of uh, alleged violation of the public meetings law that I think people could um, easily accuse us of wrongdoing, and I don't like my board to be accused of wrongdoing. So. Could I ask you to expound on that a little bit? Okay. Well, I, I'll try to say it again. Uh, the Oregon public meetings law so I know the, the requires, law, a, requires a notice of a meeting and an opportunity for the public to attend, and you have to have it accessible, and you have to take minutes and do all these things that we're doing here in this meeting. And the law defines a public meeting as a quorum, which unfortunately for us, because we're so small, means two uh, commissioners uh, who are gathered together to uh, obtain information, like a workshop, uh, for county business. And again, um, not every item, Commissioner Boyce is right in some ways, not every item that we do in the uh, department head meetings would constitute board action or county business, but very often we're talking about items. Sometimes we even go over the agenda and say and ask people what they have for the <coughs> agenda. So very often the department head meetings are talking about county business. So if two commissioners are in there obtaining information about county business and participating and deliberating on those items, then there's a very easy argument to make by connecting to the dots that that is a public meeting and then we need minutes and notice and public attendance and those kind of things. So I'm, I, I also, uh, you know, I've been doing this for decades and um, You're that old? Not, notwithstanding, notwithstanding Commissioner Boyce's representation of what other counties do, and by the way, I go to all of the meetings with all the other county councils when we have these annual conferences and they're, my understanding is they're of the same opinion as me and even the, the Lane County case, um, where the commissioners didn't even have a quorum in the same room. They felt that there was a court opined that could still be uh, sharing of information serially uh, could be a violation of the meetings law. So again, I'm, I'm just urging caution. I advise against it. I, I think um, it opens us up to criticism and attack, and I, I don't want my board to have that happen to them. That's why I'm advising against it. Ms. Gold, Commissioner Gold, I'm sorry. I really feel that we need to follow council's advice. That's what he's here for, and he's here to protect us. So I would like to make a motion that we accept the schedule as written, with the exception that people can change places in case they can't be there. I'll second that for further discussion. Um, County Administrator, is this something that you, are, you normally attend? Yes, in, the, in the, my right. seven-month tenure, I would lead the discussion. I'd put on an agenda. Um, I would seek, I'd, I'd put an agenda out a few days ahead of time for the department heads, and they, they could add things to the agenda. I would coordinate the meeting and manage the meeting. And, and there's um, a commissioner there with you at that and time? And then there's commissioner. That commissioner would be uh, attending one of the meetings, okay. would attend that department head meeting. And there, I, think there, I think it's a very useful meeting. I would hate to have the meeting go away, um, you know, I mean, one, one, one of the remedies that we had, and Mr. Posh, you may have weren't, weren't aware of this, we kind of struggled with this issue um, this past fall. One of the remedies, uh, you know, the Council Huddle had recommended was that if two commissioners do show up for a meeting, the meeting just becomes canceled in order to stop a violation. And that was one of the remedies. Um, 
Commissioner Vogt. And I have one more question. Would this become a public meeting if two commissioners were to attend? And once it becomes public, that means you have to notice it, you have to keep minutes. Is that, did I understand that correctly, Council Vidal? Right, like I said, the public meetings law has all those requirements once you have a public meeting and it broadly defines a public meeting as two commissioners, uh, you know, sh gathering information or deliberating on items at county business. And so it's unfortunate uh, that we, that a quorum is just two commissioners, but um, that's really, uh, it, it's not that complicated. And by the way, um, before we had a county administrator, these department head meetings were essentially chaired or run by the county council. And for the longest, and, and at that time, there had always been the serial attendance taking turns by one commissioner. Um, so it's consistent with the past practice and the past practice of the past county council that we not have a, a quorum of commissioners in the same room talking about all this stuff at the same time. So I'm, 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 I struggle with departing from taking turns. I don't understand the problem with that, but um, that's, you have one commissioner who has, and I don't know, Commissioner Pash, maybe you have some also. Well, that's my, my next question to you is I, I would be leaning toward rotating commissioners so that each meeting a different commissioner attends that, yeah. that department head meeting, and I think that's, that's wise because then you get fresh choices and you get fresh mind on different issues. It, it's what we've done since, you know, before I was here uh, under Jerry Herbage's uh, tutelage, as it were. So I, I just, what Commissioner Boyce is proposing is a departure from what we've been doing for a long time. It's also not my understanding of how the public meetings laws work. So. Commissioner Vogel? I have one more comment. When all of this uproar happened, I guess it was several months ago, I had heard that some of the department heads were uncomfortable with having the public there or whatever, so they would have a hard time speaking freely about their issues. So that's what I had heard. I, I think that's another issue also that we need to take account for. Commissioner Boyce. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Small County, our job is to collect as much information as we can. Four words, there is no deliberation. There cannot be any deliberation. So to go to a meeting, unless uh, we could amend the, the motion to have the commissioner res responsibly report back to the board so we can be updated on issues and concerns from the department heads, um, being able to go one out of every three meetings doesn't build a base for solving problems in my view. Bicker County maybe, uh, but it, I'm going to stress, there cannot be any deliberation because you're sitting there listening and learning and supporting. Thank you. Commissioner Gold. So if there were a report back at one of these commission meetings on what happened at the department meetings, would you be comfortable with having the schedule? Oh, was that a question to me? I'm that sorry. A, you're the one that's not wanting a schedule. I'm, I'm I did assuming. say I didn't want a schedule. I, oh, okay. I, I'm not here for a fight. I'm, that was I'm my... uh, very much in support of having staff meetings on a general basis, department manager meetings, uh, that kind of connection can be very productive with the issues. And I, and I sense we're spending plenty of time on this, so I'm, I'm going to stand down. Uh, I would rather be able to attend and listen intently and uh, do my job. But if that's impossible and the board is not in agreement with that, then uh, I'll support the motion as stated, Mr. Chair. Well, I'd like to say, as I've spoken publicly about, I don't understand how this, this quorum rule is, it's a part of our, of our government and we have to deal with it. I can't imagine not being able to speak with your business partners on a county um, and speak about strategies and that uh, over a cup of coffee without having a public meeting. So those are my opinions. Um, I guess my question, and I think it was uh, Commissioner Gold's question, was if we can have a report drawn, which I think is prudent to the other commissioners and the board, um, as the results and questions from those meetings, would you be willing to? Certainly, I think that would be very helpful. All right. So, Commissioner Gold, are you willing to amend your motion? That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. So, would you please restate your motion? Uh, I make a motion that we accept the schedule as written uh, with the understanding that there will be, will be a report back from whoever the commissioner is regarding the issues that took place. Do I have a second? Second. Any further comments? Uh, just uh, want to make sure we don't put any department heads or people that uh, 
give testimony in those meetings at a, a, at a tough position if they are, um, if any of it is protected or concerned. I, I presume that's not, should not be an issue. Thank we'll, you. We'll keep on top of it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? A question? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, let me see. We're skipping seven and eight, so next would be presentations. And that would be AOC, road fund invoice discussion. Okay. Um, the next two items, basically, I'm, I put on our presentations because you're, if action is taken, you're going to be directing staff to come back to you with a supplemental budget. So the reason you're not actually voting and approving the next two items is because uh, the money's, we're out of money. And so we have to approve more money and I don't want to waste the money on a supplemental budget if we're not going that direction. So the first item before you is a uh, AOC special assessment for road funds. So a few years, um, AOC was commingling funds for both general funds and funds that were dedicated to be utilized only on road related advocacy and lobbying. This resulted in a shortfall of funds in the road fund from AOC. So not confused with the county road fund. This is the AOC road fund. And they went in the hole $913,000. The AOC board voted to send a special assessment to counties for funds which were utilized for general lobbying. The general decision for the county board is, the, the general question for the county board is, should the county pay for the services that are received from AOC for the years that the road fund Monday was used for general support of AOC and its activities over that time frame? AOC is allowing counties to pay their proportional assessments over a 10 year period if needed. Supplemental budget would be needed for this assessment in addition to the AOC dues, which is the next item on the agenda. So we have, uh, this will be the first item and it'll be tied into the AOC due. So this is a standalone item. Um, and here's your, um, here's basically the, uh, the assessment here of $9,800. We are, you know, when you look at the packet here, this packet is 70 pages long. And so in the, within this packet are basically some of the history concerning, well, how did they get here? You know, there was some concern of maybe mismanagement, a uh, lack of oversight, uh, other types of accusations have been made. They address this within this packet. It's online for all the citizens to read. And our county at $9,800 is fairly small compared to some counties that are paying $100,000. Uh, the, there was a discussion um, this past summer and fall concerning how the special assessments would be allocated and they basically ended up on allocating them based on the percentage of the dues that currently are supported, which has to do with population and area and other, other areas. So this is basically just a, the, the proportional of that nine, $913,000. This is our portion of this. And uh, the county board can uh, decide if they wanna pay it or do they want to pay it on a 10 year basis or a three year basis or not pay it at all is my understanding. Um, I will say that one county, Jefferson County, who is no longer a dues paying member of uh, AOC, they are paying five sevenths of their particular bill because they got benefit for, they, they were members for five of those seven years where this misallocation and cold mingling of funds was and they felt there was an ethical obligation to pay for five sevenths of that bill because they were members at that point. Do you know if they put, uh, if AOC put the other two sevenths of that burden on the rest or, or not? Um, I'm not aware what they, they did put with that, that back that. into the I, fund I, and redivide I, I, it. I think what they're looking for is direction from all the 36 counties and find out where they're going to land. They might have to adjust their budget if some counties don't want to do this. When I've met with the other county administrators, they basically, everybody kind of wanted to get this off the plate. They wanted to get this done and paid for in January, February, so that AOC can go forward and have a legitimate working plan to go forward. That, that, I guess that was my question though, is if counties refuse to pay, are they putting that portion back into it and redividing it and penalizing the counties that are willing to pay? I don't think so. I think you're gonna have to make operational changes or they're going to do something else. And was this from mismanagement, you think? 
Um, I'm, I'm not going to weigh in on that. I think it was a commingling of funds, you know, where you have, you know, two different things and you're supposed to separate out activities and all of a sudden it gets dumped in the same bucket. Um, the executive director did resign and uh, they have an interim one and they had a new audit. So there, it, this 70 page details exactly the, uh, how they're addressing this issue. I think Commissioner Boyce was first. Thank you. Um, this has been a grueling thing and it, we, we watched what was a very good person leave the whole organization. And uh, sitting on the board, this, by the way, I was appointed after this was discovered. <laughs> so um, most of the bigger counties have already paid. Uh, what's really, I think, the biggest issue for the smaller counties here is that this is where we get our CIS insurance. Mm -hmm. Should AOC ever go down, uh, many rural counties would be faced with the task of trying to get insurance independently on their own liability and all, all that goes with that. Um, and then what they do in the legislature is especially good for rural counties, uh, as I'm sure you know. Um, so us being able to support them is, from my perspective, uh, something as simple but equally very important county college. Uh, the benefit that is to the commissioners. I uh, can't stress that enough. Um, and as uh, Mr. Schroeder said, we have 10 years to pay that if we need right. to do that. And so it is a bittersweet sort of thing, but we do need to uh, support AOC. The, the decisions and the, almost, almost want to say the retrofit that they have done and are doing to make sure this doesn't have it happen again with double audits, um, it's, uh, I've got a lot of confidence that, uh, especially new people that are, that are on the board above my pay scale um, are going to fix this and we won't be dealing with this again. We need to send them into this full session uh, coming up February 1st uh, with a lot of support. So um, I don't know where we're going to come up with the money, but um, yes, Mr. Chair, if we can spread that over even five years, I think that would be very, very beneficial to our county. Thank you. Ms. Gold, Commissioner Gold. I have a numbers question. What percent interest rate would we have to pay if we spread it over 10 years, three years, or did they even get into that? They didn't get into that. It's just take your $9,800 and divide it over the amount of years you want to spend. I think one of the issues the county board should consider is if you're obligating a future board to a decision you make today. So let's say you make a five-year commitment what happens and the next election happens and that board says, oh, you know. Um, I guess it comes down to uh, you make an agreement with someone and it's integrity. You keep that agreement. agreement. I think that's important. I, 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 I don't think AOC is, but I've talked to the interim director, you know, he doesn't really, he's fine either way. You know, if we want to take 10 years to pay it off or pay it off at once, he's like, as long as they know in their long-term structure, it's coming. They, so they don't, you know, they're, they're fine with either decision that we want to make. Commissioner Gold, All right. Commissioner Boyce. <laughs> I already informed the McCurry County he's not paying any interest, so. Well, I like free money. I'll stretch it out as long as we can. So <laughs> uh, do we have any, uh, anything from Louise on this? For, from a budgetary standpoint, um, and I was going to, this is tied in, I might as well just, you know, Louise, you can come up here, but uh, the next item on the agenda is AOC dues, right. and this ties into this. So the line item for the back office for dues, which includes AOC um, up to like $19,300 a year, LGPI $1,588 a year, ONC counties membership is $18,427. And me. could you say that again, that last part again, please? O ONC counties. $18,427 per dues. So ONC is about the same price basically as uh, AOC. AOC. And then NATCO, which is a National Association of Counties, is 450 bucks. So the Budget Committee budgeted $35,000 for the uh, current year, 1819. Our costs mm -hmm. currently for 1819 are $38,090. So we've already overspent that um, budget mostly because the, um, and this goes back to the, uh, the ongoing problem. We have a fiscal year, they have a calendar year. And so 
we basically ended up paying our base oh. our 2018 budget our eight, 2018 dues for aoc we paid them in july which falls into this budget and now we have another invoice for this and miss callstrom can expand on that um but um we can go more into depth with this in the next item um i guess i'd like to your, your question was about the numbers of miss gold always yes and so the question is no matter what you do whatever decision you make you're probably going to have to make a supplemental budget and what we'll, what we'll be looking for from the board at this point is saying you know develop a supplemental budget and come back for you to vote on and uh in this case for the for the uh road fund the direction i'd like to see from the board is do you want to pay it off at once or over a five or ten year period i'd make a motion to pay it over 10 years since we're not paying any interest on it Great. i think it's a no-brainer in my it's second money <laughs> got it any further discussion question aye 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 okay so staff will come back with a sub after they advertise come back with a supplemental budget right uh, is that enough over the budget to warrant having a sup supplemental the next budget? Item, the next item is going to put you over the budget. Usually, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, Louise calls from um, county accountant, and that statement is correct. Um, the county is already over budget by three thousand dollars, and then um, this is nine hundred and eighty, and we actually haven't paid our dues for 18 2019 which will add another um, mm -hmm. depending on which dues you pay another somewhere around it? up to uh, 19,000 yeah three but it's more likely going to be like I don't know 17,000 or something like that so that's the next agenda item so we're, we're already on like say we're already on this agenda item uh, one of the problems is 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 um, it I went back over the history of the dues account and what it looked like they were doing is um, at one point <coughs> they were um, they were taking the dues that were paid in January and they were doing a prepaid for half of it so every year you have half of one year and half of another year um, in my experience when you're paying dues for a year um, you usually only have, uh, you just, you, you don't bother with all that prepaid stuff. You just pay that year's due in that year, and that's for a full year. Um, but it looked like in the past somebody was concerned about that, so they started doing this half year, half year, half year thing, and then they didn't. And one of the things that happened was at the end of, um, for the 2018 bill that was received, in January of 2018, there was so much discussion about what was going to be paid off of that bill and what wasn't going to be paid off that bill that it actually came down to that bill didn't get paid until July. So now we've got that bill in there. I've got another bill that's going to come in. Um, so my two choices is is the new bill that comes in. Do I uh, <clears throat> put 100% of it into this fiscal year and in that case I need a, a supplemental budget for around $18,000 plus this thousand dollars plus the three thousand dollars that's over or do I uh, continue this weird prepaid um, in the middle of a year type thing that usually we don't do that kind of thing and in that case I'll need another eighty eighty five hundred dollars Plus that thousand dollars, plus the three thousand dollars that is over. That's why. Well, bottom line, what we're looking at is, is we're looking at a supplemental budget, no matter what you guys. Okay, do. and I'm looking at this at the voluntary dues versus the mandatory dues, and I think it's really important that we keep our membership simply for the insurance, if nothing else. But yes. Yeah, because so there would be a savings of fifty-seven eighty-five if we just did the mandatory parts of those dues. Ms. Colstrom, if I could, uh, would it be better for us and, and much cleaner for the county to pay that forward because we're on a fiscal year and they're on a calendar year that we pay that forward so that we don't have this problem again? 
the, the easiest thing to do so that you don't get into this problem again of having two, basically two years paid in one year is to just pay this bill, cover it with a supplemental budget, and then next January pay that bill for that year. And that way you only have one year and one fiscal year and it, it doesn't require all these journal entries and people remembering what they did the year before. Uh, so I, hope you words, suck it up now. I hope you remind me of that when it's time because I think that's the best way to go. <laughs> Mr. Boyce. Hey, thanks again. You know, I'm just looking at the categories here, the Federal Land Management Subcommittee. That's always 7 o'clock in the morning. I might let you inherit that at some point because sometimes I leave here at 2 in the morning thanks, to get there in time. But it is very important for Curry County especially and the purse, um, I think that's all the right you know, that's it's not going anywhere right now, and that's a really, really tough issue. Um, so, yeah, that's all I have for now on that. Excuse me. So, can we have a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we pay everything now, but on this um, amounts that they've billed us, just pay the ones that are mandatory instead of voluntary. People can be part of the committee, just not vote on those committees. We, we have been paying the federal land management subcommittee dues in addition to the uh, yeah that's like an extra four thousand yeah. forty one hundred paying, paying the first one the second one and then the federal one that's the ones we have traditionally paid thank you do we have a second second mr chair and could you re your motion basically you want me to reiterate my motion yes. my motion is that we pay both bills, but $13,518.48, which would just be the mandatory Just part. those top two. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're not including the federal land management? No, because that's a, a huge amount. I realize that it's import important, but certainly people can go to those meetings. It, it just would mean they wouldn't vote. So. Well... You might guess I have a little bit of an adverse opinion to that, and then I... I That's why I was curious why you seconded I, my motion. Well, I didn't know, I, I guess I didn't understand that you were taking that, <coughs> that uh, category out. Now I'm looking at veterans dues, so no, I, I can't support that motion. Forgive me, Mr. Chair. All right, so let me call, uh, is there a second to the motion? He withdrew the second. He withdrew. Having no second, I would draw the motion. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, that we do the three: the AOC General Fund, the Public Lands Fund, and the Federal Land Management. I think they're extremely important to this county right now, especially with all we have going on. Boy, it's hard not to include veterans on that. And I, I'll I miss, I, that's I my it. that's my motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Call for the question. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. That will come back to you. Um, we probably need I to... I can do it on the 16th. Um, this one, because of the appropriation level in that uh, um, non-departmental where these are paid out of, I don't need to do an advertised supplemental budget, so it will come back to you next week as a supplemental budget as well as the four that I just advertised for uh, next week. Commissioner Boyce. Just quick comment on NACO. That sometimes I get just as an excuse to get on an airplane and it's for $450, that's not a lot of money. But when you go through county college, you'll find some bigger county commissioners that will get information back to you and it's very helpful and saves you the, the need to, it's a very good organization, but that's just one way to save a few dollars there. Okay. All right, next we have, uh, we'll through all the dues. Okay, so this item here is, um, uh, again, a discussion point where if you wanted to pay dues, it would actually be another addition to the supplemental budget, which would be for next week. So the, um, the, uh, the Oregon Coastal Zone Management Association unites local governments and elected and appointed officials in the Oregon coast. Through OCZMA, local government officials advocate with collective voice on coastal policy, exchange ideas, and build new leadership skills 
pursue transformational and cost-effective solutions, enrich the public's understanding, local governments, and exercise exemplary leadership. So in discussions with them, because um, I, I, you know, as a county administrator, I have gotten these notices. I've never gone to a meeting, but I did ask the question, um, are we members? And uh, the, count, the, the dues are currently $4,000, uh, and we got that invoice in August, and we didn't pay it. Uh, we haven't paid dues since 2015. That was one year. Um, we had a few years before that that we weren't members, and, but we had a whole string of years in the late 2000s where we were members every single year. And the dues used to be $10,000. They used to be more. And so in talking with the director, uh, the OCZMA bylaws, membership is only ended when a resolution is passed by the organization. So we're not currently due paying members, but we are more than welcome to attend the meetings. So this is one of those same issues that you're talking about with AOC. You're more than willing to attend the meetings and you guys, you know, um, you know, if you want to be noticed on this before I leave today, I will, you know, do an email so you know about the meetings. And, if, but if you want to be uh, due paying members, it's $4,000. And I, in the packet today, you, you, know, you were able to read uh, their mission and uh, what they've done and some of the, some of the history here. And uh, there are, you know, you know they, they, they do some good work. Um, and if you want to pay the dues, you can. With that, I'd entertain a motion to say move to pay invoice for OCZMA or move to direct staff to bring back a resolution withdrawing from OCMA. Or you don't have to have a motion at all. You can just go to the meetings. Commissioner Boyce. Once again, thank you. Um, I'd like to spend a little time with Representative David Brock Smith on this. He's very familiar with this. Um, so I would prefer not to commit to paying dues today. However, uh, I'm going to meet with uh, Gary Melliman tomorrow, MRI, this uh, Brookings City Administrator. And I was going to contact uh, Lucy Lamonti because I knew she had some significant experience with this. Uh, the only thing I would add to that. If, if, if yes, if we continue this, um, the eight major issues that they are focused on that that are important to Curry County, five or five of those eight are I think critical. That's natural land use, natural resources, fisheries, certainly economic development, and transportation. Highway 101. Um, so yes, my uh, my preference would be to. Uh, maybe not commit one way or the other on dues today, but I could bring back a report uh, from those three people and, and uh, they, they may have some good direction and recommendations for us, Mr. Chair. Why don't we bring this, uh, plan on bringing this back for the 16th? Okay. That's fine. That's okay. Thank you. Okay, so the, the, yeah, so the, the only question I saw Coulter raise her hand, the only issue is if we're gonna, this is under the same line item as the yeah. AOC, and if we're gonna do a supplemental budget, it be beneficial and effective just to do it all at once and add another four thousand dollars to that. I'm assuming that's what you're going to say, Ms. Callstrom. Commissioner Boyce, in the first. Thing. Thank you. Um, I do want to add, though, if we do get uh, you know kind of affirmative recommendation from them, it's going to take one commissioner to really devote some time to this, and that means travel. That means uh, contributing. Uh, that means asking tough questions, justifying that dues and the expense so I don't I don't know that would be me or who that would be but uh, important thank you Commissioner Gold I was just gonna say we are currently members and we could move the payment till say next year yep I I, I would prefer doing that uh, I know when I was involved with the port they were members and this was a really important thing to be a member of because all those marine reserves things were coming in affecting the fishermen. So, so the, the only other recommendation I might have for you since you really haven't landed on it, you want a little more research is we put it in the sup, we put it in a supplemental budget and then you vote on it next week. Yes or no. Co just cause we're putting, so we're going to notice a supplemental budget, <coughs> we put the $4,000 in there next week. You're going to get to vote. Uh, you're going to have to have a regular motion on your road fund and your AOC dues. I mean, I, I know you voted about that, but we're going to basically put that in the supplemental budget. You can take it out next week if you don't want to pay these dues, if you want further deliberations on this. But that way, if you do want to join, it would be done as far as the supplemental budget goes in notice. 
So moved, Mr. Chair. I think that's a good recommendation. I'll second that. Any further discussion? I just like the idea that we're not absolutely tied into it. Yeah, you guys, yeah, so basically this gives you a week to kind of, you know, get your, you know, pun intended, ducks in a row and uh, figure out do you want to pay that $4,000 or not and pull it out next week if you don't. Well, there could even be more than a week because you could just pay it next year. So Precisely. I'll bring back a report, Mr. Chair. Call for the question. Aye. 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 All right, we have some announcements, um, meeting schedule, vacancies. <clears throat> Vacancies are the Ambulance Service Area Advisory Committee. It's a law, a law enforcement position. Planning Commission, two members for South County, which terms, their terms will be expiring April 1st, 2021 and June 6th, 2022. Building Codes, Appeals Board, an eight member board. County Compensation Board, two members with terms expiring December 31st, 2019 and December 31st, 2021. Then we have uh, January 16th, 2019, general meeting at 10 a.m., Commissioner's Hearing Room. January 21st, county offices will be closed for Martin Luther King Day. And February uh, 6th of 2019, a general meeting uh, at 10 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room. Next, we have county administrator updates. Administrator Schroeder. Yeah, within your, um, I won't go over it, but in your packet today and online, there was a surveyor's report. I encourage you to, to review that. Um, I have, a, I'll give a code enforcement update verbally. We don't normally put that online due to the sensitivity of the nature of that stuff. But I will start with uh, basically saying, uh, you, know, you know, shout out to the DA's office for a good job. There was a um, journal, journalism professor at the University of Oregon told his uh, class to request public records for the last five years for every district attorney's office in Oregon. State law says the DA has to respond to the request within five business days. Six counties, including Klamath, never even replied to the students. Hood River County District Attorney even ignored the follow emails asking why they hadn't done that. But Southern Oregon, Josephine Jackson and Curry counties all emailed back within five days. So good yeah. job for the DA and good job for the staff. Um, I know that was one thing that has been, uh, uh, you know, kind of tightened up over the last six months is a public records request and the procedures and policies for the public to get information and receive information from that. Uh, just as an update uh, for that, for uh, citizens, uh, if you're going to be going to the uh, planning department or the building department, you'll be following the same procedures for um, public records requests as any other department in the county does. So there'll be forms to fill out and that form will um, uh, basically be responded to in five days with the amount of money it would take to get this particular piece of information back. It's one way that we're, again, we're trying to capture dollars that, uh, you know, from a fee base to increase revenue to the county and basically making sure all the departments follow public records policies and collecting of that dollars is one way that we can help support the county. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. <coughs> From code enforcement, um, we had 13 new cases um, that uh, came on board in December and they involved uh, blocked access to driveways, Ill illegal camping, sanitation, uh, posting of notices for dangerous buildings, um, draining uh, and excavation without a permit, trash, uh, no more illegal camping, more illegal grading, abandoned buildings, unsafe, animal impound issue, another illegal grading, another illegal camping and blocked access <coughs> to property. We had 14 follow-up and progress checks on old cases. Um, and I will, you know, so we have a, you know, we have a tracking sheet and it's large and has lots of information on it. We don't, this is not a public document because 
It has uh, people that are filing complaints and we want to protect people's uh, rights not to be um, outed by doing this. And, and But I will say that it just exemplifies the fact that we have um, you know, a part-time guy who's working 19 hours a week and we can't, we're not even scratching the surface of what needs to be done in this county. And I would really encourage you as you go forward in your budget cycle this next spring to uh, you know, double down in your efforts and hire a full-time code enforcement officer because it's, it's definitely needed. And we're taking on more responsibility also um, for abandoned vehicles. So we're working with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, obviously a, an abandoned vehicle is kind of a low priority for a deputy that's charged with lots of other things out there in the county to protect. It's not a high priority for that. So we're turning that over to code enforcement. So we basically have our code enforcement officer also have access to the databases to look up ownership and bins and licenses and stuff like that. So uh, we're trying to uh, help that. I was scheduling a meeting next week between basically planning and building and the sheriffs and code enforcement and uh, administration because all these, you know, and public health, a lot of co a lot of cases that we find in the county are you know they have so many compounding issues they're not just usually one issue there's only a number of different issues so and we did have a in our um, in our, our solid waste committee this meeting this morning actually we also talked about uh, DEQ um, maybe being more involved when we have uh, sewage issues we do have one of the compounding issues when you have the, all this illegal camping is you have you know illegal sewage dumping and that is an environmental issue. So not only from a county standpoint, is it a hazardous waste under our nuisance ordinances? It's also a DEQ violation. Uh, but ultimately you need to, you know, whatever you do, you need boots on the ground. And uh, DEQ is no different than us. It's hard to get boots on the ground to come out and investigate one case. So we wanna make sure we're just coordinating, coordinating our efforts between the state agencies and the counties uh, to, do, to do this. So, um, Future agenda items, a um, couple things that I've sent out to the commission that maybe you want to consider. Uh, there was a road fund loan ordinance that came out last year, and I think it might be good for this board to review that at some point in the future, maybe have a workshop on that, because I know there was some discussion concerning the flexibility and the uh, allowability of this ordinance to be able to loan money. I think it'd be good for this board to either uh, concur with that ordinance and make sure that they're aligned with the requirements and the interest rates, the payback schedules, all those things that uh, deal with that. Um, just my recommendation that you have a workshop so everybody can revisit that issue. And if you wanna change that, you certainly could. Nope. Um, the Flores Lake discussion, um, I don't know if the board wants to, I mean, if they want to do that in February or not? I mean, how, what kind of appetite do you guys have to continue down the road concerning, and I did send some information out from the last packet uh, concerning the Flores Lake, uh, the workshop and other information about that. Is there an appetite to continue with this discussion of the Floral Lakes land swap, the 70 acres for the 30 acres on 101? Is there an appetite for that? Personally, I think we should pursue it because we could get land that is actually usable through a land swap. Okay. I will say at this point, I have a couple of meetings scheduled with some people up there that I'm going to be uh, joining in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and I'd like to reserve my comments uh, because I'm new here until that time. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's good. It's just, uh, I didn't I think I stated last week, we, it's not a real high priority right now, but uh, maybe in February we can gain some momentum on that. And are you leaning, the time. I guess his question is, are you yes. leaning towards swapping? Okay. So um, all right. That's so a good way to well, so characterize three are, it. Two or three are definitely yes, and I'm a maybe. Yeah, so uh, work with uh, Council Huddle then. Um, he'll probably be putting the agendas together, at least working with staff up with the agendas together. And I'll leave him the information to get the state involved with that so he's aware of Perfect. of uh, what that uh, future holds. The other thing that I would like to add to your uh, workshop, if the board is amenable, is from one of the outcomes from the Solid Waste Committee meeting this morning, is CTR will be uh, wanting to roll out recycling uh, bins 
at individual homes in unincorporated areas. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Ms. Gold? Is that yeah, there, plus Cape Ferrello. Yes. And and they would like to have, they would like to talk to the board about that because evidently the board's gonna have to take action about that. There's something that has to change within a county ordinance or your license and for them. I actually don't know why they have to have you approve it, but they do. And I think it'd be beneficial for the board to weigh in to have that in a workshop setting so that when it comes back before you for a vote, it's just a consent item. So with your permission, I'd like to put that on the 13th of February. That's fine with fine me. With I me. think it would be good okay. to be educated. All right. Um, so this is my uh, last meeting. Uh, so the, my last official greeting from the Office of Administration. I'll say as new year begins, change comes with it. As an appointee to the Curry County, from the Curry County Board, my tenure with the county will end today uh, when the ordinance creating the position of county administrators repealed by the new Board of Commissioners. Transition from one majority to another is a hallmark of American democracy. It's what makes America great. It's been my distinct pleasure to serve the citizens and staff of Curry County from this office. And I'm thankful to have met so many wonderful, hardworking employees, volunteers, and supporters across the county. Public service is a calling, and I hold up the employees of Curry County for their dedication to serve the public good. I want to thank all the people who have supported me and offered guidance during my tenure here. Moving forward, there clearly will be a need for citizen engagement to transition Curry County to a fiscally sustainable position. I would encourage everybody to work positively and cooperatively together to solve these long-term fiscal, economic, and housing problems along with others and help your county flourish. As for me, I'll be transitioning to the next challenge. If I can be assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I have my uh, Gmail address here. If everything was perfect, we would never learn and grow. I wish you all the best. Thank you for your service. Yeah. I thank you for your service as well, sir. I'd, I'd also like to say I'd like to post that on our website for a while, um, so okay. that, that letter, so sure. that anyone that would like to get in touch with you uh, has your email address. I'd like okay. to offer you that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give that to JJ. Hmm? Commissioner Boyce? Uh, might be too late here, but uh, Council Huddle, were we going to work on the travel ordinance today, or where? I might have missed something there. We think it's on the 16th, but I think you are a little too late for today. To change the agenda. Yep. Okay. But you. if if, um, <clears throat> if I could, I think uh, Administrator Schroeder's comments are timely, and I think it transitioned us into the next couple items that we did have agenda amendments on that we were going to discuss that I was going to present. Right. Um, Before you start, uh, go ahead. Sure. David Barnes, you wanted to comment on this? Uh, but did you still want to have your comment or no? You're good. All right. Um, well, if you want to do, I guess you could do commissioner updates is what Louise is saying is on the agenda and then we can go to Kay, but um, I thought it was apropos for you to go ahead and okay. step in at this Thank time. you. So at your places and per the agenda amendments, we had um, what is an emergency ordinance to repeal. So it's an AGRS emergency ordinance to repeal ordinance 1701, thereby eliminating the position of county administrator effective upon adoption. And just by way of background, with the ordinance procedure, the state statutes 203045 requires ordinance be adopted at two readings uh, 13 days apart. Uh, subsection 4 allows emergency ordinances to be adopted at a single reading um, by ordinance and title uh, if it is a unanimous vote. I'll read the ordinance and then I'll request a vote uh, on this ordinance. Uh, the title of the ordinance is, in the matter of an ordinance repealing Article 1, Division 17 of the Curry County Code, eliminating office and position of Curry County Administrator. The Board of Commissioners for Curry County ordains as follows. This ordinance shall be known as, again, a number to be provided, an ordinance amending Curry County Code. And the findings are, Current Article 1, Division 17 of the Curry County Code, Ordinance Number 17-01, is entitled Creating the Office and Position of Curry County Administrator, Delegating Duties and Responsibilities to Perform His Slash Her Job Functions and Declaring an Emergency. Ordinance 1701 was a departure from historical practices in Curry County. It was not adopted by unanimous board. 
Since its adoption, the Board of Commissioners has a new composition that is opposed to the departure from historical county practices reflected in Ordinance 1701. And a majority of the Board of Curry County Commissioners desires to repeal Ordinance Number 1701, thereby eliminating the position of county administrator and return to the historical practices and structure of governance that served Curry County in the past. And then the Section 3, Article 1, this is the repealer, Division 17 of Curry County Code concerning creating the office and position of county administrator is repealed in its entirety, effective upon adoption. And then this has an emergency clause. The Board of Commissioners for the County of Curry deems this ordinance necessary for the immediate preservation and protection of the public peace, health, safety, and general welfare for Curry County and declares an emergency exists and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect uh, on its passage. So it's really up to the board. Um, we've got an emergency <coughs> ordinance. Now even if an emergency ordinance is not unanimously adopted in a single reading and requires two readings, it's still effective on after the second reading. Um, 13 days from now. So it's really up to the board. Is there a motion to adopt um, the ordinance eliminating or repealing uh, Ordinance 1701? And I want to say because this, uh, we were directed uh, an executive session um, last time, since that time, Mr. Schroeder has not had no uh, opposition to to this. So I would uh, I would hope that we can get in a, get a uh, Get a three vote on this so we can quickly move forward so i will make a motion to uh to adopt uh as mr huddle has, has spoken second mr chair any further discussion uh i'd just like to be on the record as stating why i'm going to vote against this um in 2004 a citizens task force was was put together by the county with about Oh, 20 or 30 individuals and their number one priority was to get uh, a county manager. Another reason I am voting against this is because it would be next to impossible to abide by the public meetings law with three commissioners running the county. Another reason I'm against this is because of the continuity issue. Uh, a lot of times commissioners coming and going it's like a revolving door and so there needs to be some continuity another reason i'm against it is because over 50 percent of the general law counties have administrators we are a general law county not a charter county as was stated previously so those are going to be my reasons for voting no on this issue and I want to say that I ran on, on the premise that we would not have a county administrator. Um, this county has been very successful for decades uh, without one. Um, Julie Schmelzer was here as a, as, a, uh, director. As, an, as a director of operations for the county, and I felt she was very extremely successful with her position. And I've actually spoken with her many times about um, her, the possibility of her coming back. Uh, I do I do agree that we need some sort of a conduit between the the, uh, the commissioners and the and the different departments. Um, however, I don't think giving all authority to an administrator is a proper way to uh, to run a county, and that's just my opinion. Commissioner Boyce, thank you. If we could have this discussion now, I think it might be helpful. It might be a benefit to Commissioner Gold um, if we were to consider. Uh, and I certainly am bringing back the director of, of uh, administra administration, uh, economic development, uh, Curry community development. Uh, the difference is uh, the authority structure, uh, the uh, the organizational chart that we're all pretty familiar with, uh, and uh, I, I think that is as far as the p portion of the county, and and that is not an insignificant number that want somebody to work with an administrator. I once told, uh, because you and, this is no negative, but because you and Commissioner Huxley were part-time, I, I challenged Mr. Schroeder, I say, said, we need two of you and two of me. And so having three, as you have committed to full-time commission <coughs> efforts, you have certainly expressed that for months. Having a, having a director of administration, I don't know if that, I'm not speaking for the board here, if that would be the title that would remain, um, but that person could be very beneficial, and I do have a person in mind, and uh, I hope to, uh, 
hope to make some progress progress on that down the road, but uh, that person will not be a county administrator, will not uh, usurp my authority or your authority. I believe you've stated that on many occasions. And so, Commissioner Gold, knowing that, uh, this would speed things up for us for about a week, and we could put that out for application, or we could just revert back. I think uh, it's been explained to me uh, legally that uh, we can go back to that position, and I, I, think it's, I think it's a position you could get behind and uh, uh, strongly support. Well, it sounds to me like you've got a person chosen already. Is that correct? Or? Well, I, personally, I do. Yeah, personally, okay, I do. It sounded like well, Commissioner I, Pash also has someone well, chosen. Well, again, I, I've, I have spoken with Julie Schmelzer about this. Uh, she was the previous director of operations here. Um, I actually was surprised when she was let go. Um, I thought she was doing a fantastic job since she's been in Josephine County. There are rave reviews about her job that she's performed in that county and um, I've got commissioners calling saying, please don't take Julie, she's great. Um, her resume speaks for itself, she is, it, it's impeccable and she, I have had conversations with her and she would be willing to come back to the county. Um, in the in the right position and uh, and if if offered um, and she could come back really quickly she would be willing to do that I think you're saying she loves Curry County <clears throat> and she would take quite a pay cut in order to do that which obviously I appreciate I, I also uh, thank you for recommend or for reference in the other commissioners you know that I've gotten to know very well and uh, uh, if this happens yeah they They've given me and you both a bad time, and uh, I hope it happens. I hope we can, we're able to follow through. And again, Commissioner Gold, I, I think you would be, uh, will be, if, if this takes place, will be. Uh, and, and one other thing, the, the, before we got here, she left, what was, I don't know what word to describe other than incredibly unfortunate, unnecessary. I almost want to say tragic. That might be an overstatement, but yeah. Joe County grabbed her up just like that. So the fact that she, uh, if we can uh, come to terms with her, um, I'm, I'm incredibly optimistic that it will solve. Uh, uh, her background, is, as uh, Commissioner Pash said, uh, in economic development, her background here with Curry County, um, expertise, um, her simple people skills uh, cannot, uh, can, cannot be overstated. Commissioner Gold? I would say we're kind of putting the cart before the horse simply because when you're hiring someone, I, I'm going to defer to Council Huddle, don't we have to go through certain... Uh, oh, advertising. Advertising and, and all of that and, and our pers our someone personnel. having it yeah, our personnel, regs, in that our personnel regs allow us to, I think, hire someone without advertising. For instance, if we're transferring from department or rehiring a former employee, I'll have to confirm that, but I'm pretty close to sure that's the rule. So we can rehire former employees without um, doing advertising, and we can hire someone from one department to another without publicly advertising. I'll, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the rule. Yeah, I was just getting a little uncomfortable with the discussion. I, well, I have me, nothing against the woman. I, I think if, if I'm understanding what's happening correctly, um, you're being urged to change your vote from a, from a no to a yes so that this emergency ordinance can be adopted in a single meeting so that um, the two other commissioners can move on with the changes. Technically, this would not be effective until the second reading. Um, and uh, if you vote no, and therefore, you know, we, even though because uh, Schroeder's separation agreement is premised on a vote to eliminate the position, and that would definitely occur today regardless of whether it needed a first or a, sec or a second reading. So um, Schroeder's uh, uh, separation agreement would be effective today, but um, the emergency ordinance to repeal would not be effective until the second reading. Um, in, in the event you vote no. So what I'm getting is they're trying to explain the person coming in for the director of the, the, it's the same prior job we used to have, the director of administration slash economic development director. 
um, but it didn't have all the powers and authorities that Commissioner Boyce and Pash have talked about that are, as you remember, 1701 was a broad delegation of powers to a single individual. And um, what I understand is, and as said in the ordinance, is the desire to go back to the prior form of governance with the director of administration slash economic development director, a person who would put the agendas together, work on projects, those kind of things, but not have all the powers of county administrator. I think what they're trying to explain to you is there would be a reasonable alternative to this so that um, that you'd be delaying that by voting no, but it, again, it's your vote, and I think they just want you on to, I'm, I'm not trying to put words in their mouth, but yeah, we're not making a decision on hiring anyone else right now. This is only to eliminate the, this is only to repeal an ordinance. And it's basically, uh, it's basically to expedite things. I mean, uh, again, things are going to happen. It's a matter of if they happen now or if they happen, uh, you know, in two weeks from now, you've already voiced every, uh, you know, your concerns uh, against it. And, and that is duly noted. I'm just asking you to, offering you an olive branch to, uh, to, to change your vote and, uh, and, and we'll go from there. You know, this, this goes right into what I was going to talk about in my commissioner's report. I realize I'm outvoted. That's fine. And I realize that it's important to work together, and I will do that, whatever the decision is made, because that's what a functional board does. Absolutely. A dysfunctional bo bo board, if someone's outvoted, will go out and cause all kinds of problems. And I and appreciate that. Go out well, and cause all kinds of problems. No, I'm not. <laughs> she didn't mention you. In a, I'm, I'm not sorry. being specific or light. pointing fingers. What I'm saying is I will support whatever decision is made. Thank you. Commissioner Boyce. Well, thank you again. And, and I, I think this is very productive, so I appreciate that you're willing, Mr. Chair, to take the time. And I, I, I really believe it's a way to bring the community together, the county together, or at least it has that potential. Not just this particular hire, if that's the route we go. But in getting to know the other commission boards, and you will as well, all, all three of us uh, have that opportunity and I give it a tremendous recommendation. None of the other counties in our district have a county administrator, but what they do have are exceptional staff that are equally, Commissioner Gold, equally loyal to all the commissioners. With the integrity that Julie Smeltzer have, again, if that's the route we go, there's no question in my mind that she would have equal allegiance to you and answering your questions and supporting you and doing her due diligence and duty for this county. I, I, really I, have, I didn't say, no, I didn't no, say No, I really you, have nothing against Julie Schmelzer. No, I, I've, I've never really worked with her or had anything to do with her. Yeah, so I, I think That I think has we're, nothing to do right, with we're, this discussion. We're currently just um, considering uh, emergency ordinance to repeal ordinance 1701. Um, it can be effective today if we have a unanimous vote. If not, it needs to come back for a second reading. So I'd like to call, uh, ask for, for a motion. Uh, on, uh, I think we had the motion, but I can't remember. JJ, did we have a motion to adopt this? There was a motion. A motion by uh, Commissioner Chairman Cash, uh, seconded by uh, Vice Chair Boyce, to adopt the ordinance to repeal 1701. Any further discussion? That was made about 11 4. Thank you. 13 minutes. A question? Aye. I. I'm going to have to say no. <laughs> That's okay. okay. So that. But I will support whatever it's happens. It's not effective today. We'll need another reading, and uh, we'll bring it back. Um, and it says at least 13 days apart. So we've got um, yep, a little more time. Okay. All right, we've got uh, seven minutes left. If I could, Go I ahead. have one other item then, and this is an order approving a separation agreement with county administrator uh, with signature oh, authority right. to the chair. And um, we voted to repeal ordinance 1701. Uh, the county administrator desire and the county desire to enter into a separation agreement with the mutual release and mutual non-disparagement. And uh, therefore then the county commissioners uh, that the separation agreement with the county administrator is approved with signature authority to the chair. And so I'm seeking a motion to approve that. I uh, make a motion to approve the separation agreement. Are we going to have any comments, Mr. Chair? Yes. Just non-disparagement. I understand. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? 
or comments? Thank you. Um, I'm in strong opposition to this agreement, but I second it because I want to abide by it and I want to move forward. Turn the page, try and figure out regrouping and uh, not waste any more time. So uh, I will, I will abide by this agreement, personally and professionally. Any further discussion? A question? Aye. Aye. No. All right, we have five minutes left before lunch. Uh, do we want to take our lunch now? And, uh, Is there any further business? Well, we've got commissioner updates, um, and then we've got comment um, for the good of the order. I need like two minutes, three minutes maybe. I don't have any comments. So do you have any more comments? Yeah, I have a few comments. It'll be short, sweet, and okay, to the point. Okay, Commissioner Gold. As usual. Uh, I got a, a piece of information from uh, Beth Barker Hid Hid Hildago, and she wanted this read in. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but she wanted to talk about a survey from the Oregon Food Bank Network. And I'm just going to give you a quick update here. 69% of all house households accessing food pantries are 100% or below the federal poverty, poverty level. Uh, with added food from the pantry, 79% of survey takers meet their household food needs for the month. 29% of survey respondents only access an emergency food bank, bank one to three times a year, while 43% of the respondents indicated that they came to a food pantry 10 or more times in the last 12 months. Okay, I, I'm just going to stop at that. If uh, JJ wants to put this on the website, I would appreciate that. Also, I attended uh, quite a long uh, meeting yesterday that was um, talking about boards and functional boards, and I just wanted to give a little bit of what happened there. Um, as far as what are functional boards, and I'm just going to give you some highlights here. One of the big things of a functional board is if there is a vote that is doesn't agree with everybody else, the board should be unified in supporting this decision, and I vow that I will do this once the de decision is made. Also, it's important that we have diversity of opinions. Also, the board needs to be willing to abide by its own rules, policies, and code of ethical contact, conduct. Also, respect for the confidentiality requirement of a board meeting in executive sessions is important. And an effort to foster unity, harmony, and open communications with the board. And bottom line, integrity is right at the top of everything. And one other thing, I attended a um, trash meeting today. I call it trash. But um, there's been a big uh, push for people in the unincorporated areas to be able to recycle. So they're going to be getting this up and running within the next two months, which is very, very good. And our county is doing very well in the, in, uh, the amount of contamination that is in the recycle bins. We're at 1.5%. The average rate is 15%. So I think that's amazing. Right now, it's just available in the cities. So it's going to go into the unincorporated areas soon, which I think is exciting, plus Cape Verillo, my area. Thank you. Thank that's you. it. Commissioner Boyce? So four minutes, five minutes, OK? Uh, well, we're going to run against the time constraints. So what would you like me to brief, do? As brief as you can be, sir. Oh, that rings a bell. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. Um, on the screen, I have the Excel sheet that shows every dime spent on county travel, both personally and through the county budget for the full two years. It will be on my website, my portion of the county website. My apologies. Um, state of the county presentation, I'm going to do that subject to the board's approval on the 16th. Uh, loyal opposition uh, to Commissioner Gold's January 2nd presentation. Uh, nicely done, by the way. Um, update, I'll be in Brookings, on Brookings Radio for a half hour tomorrow at 1.30 if anybody wants to send in uh, 
booze or uh, even has questions with Steve Braun, and then uh, meeting with uh, Gary Millman. Uh, then I have a group I'm meeting in Brookings with health care issues. And then that afternoon I'll be meeting with Career Community Health Executive Director uh, Ken Duque on recruiting health care providers for for Curry County. I'm hoping that the board can take an active, at least supportive role in that. Um, and then early Monday morning, I'm going to the AOC legislative days. I mentioned leaving at seven. Um, you know, I'll probably come back that night. I, I don't think I'll stay. Um, presently, and oh, what did I miss there? On the 16th, I'm gonna give uh, liaison uh, recommendations to the board uh, it'd just be a rough outline um, and right now I'm serving on eight boards and they are and they're all important especially AOCC uh, it's not poor me or look at me but uh, they are just very important to this county one is Curry Community Health Goose Curry Douglas <coughs> Business Development I see I just got an email from Susan Morgan Natural Re Resources uh, Travel Southern Oregon Southern Oregon, Oregon Workers Investment uh, this is really important. We go to Coquille once a month, Southwest Area Commission on Transportation, Curry Wildfire Prevention. Uh, that's been inactive for the last couple months. We moved closer to fire season. I know you've had a lot of interest and contribution in that as well. So now again, that you're both full time and, and prepared. Uh, it will require a lot of work, a lot of commitment. And I, I, I'm confident. Can I make one correction? I think I'm doing the transportation now. Southwest Oregon. Oh, not Southwest. Okay. Yeah. I take that back. Curry County. That's okay. That's okay. Wh whichever one you're on is important, too. No, <laughs> that's fine. That's, I just wanted to make sure the record was straight. But you'll, you'll learn, uh, as it took me a while, how important these, these boards are to this county, whether it's in Curry County, uh, travel, or outside the county. I try and um, really monitor that well and be very precise on where I go and what I spend and uh, that's never changed. Uh, the only other thing I have, oh, I, this travel is gonna require some early mornings and late night for both of you, and I think you're both capable and, and fully capable and, and uh, committed on that. Um, evening meetings. Uh, I'm hoping that at some point we can, we can consider, uh, I'd like to do the third Wednesday in either Brookings or Port Orford every month, 5.30 to 8 o'clock. Maybe even the 23rd of Port Orford. That might, I won't ask for a commitment on that today, but I, I think that is uh, the, the better we are able to learn every aspect, every region, every city, community of our county, the better we can serve, the better opportunities we have to unite this county and face these issues that we are, we are faced with. Um, the Curry Fleet policy I'll have, a, it's probably going to be the 23rd, but we have 16 vehicles sitting idle uh, that barely get used. Uh, of course, I'm prohibited from using any of them right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, with uh, Enterprise Auto, Mr. Ryan Alford, uh, just about done, Mr. Chair. Curry building fee increases, I want to repeal that, at least amend it from the uh, December 19th meeting. We had 20% fee increases, um, so I'll be bringing that to the board. Uh, Jim Ailey on the 16th, Pacific Gales, uh, is agreed to come just give a quick quick update on his progress. CEO of, yes, Pacific Gills Golf Course. Um, last one, uh, I'm also, I don't know if I can get it done by the 16th, certainly the 23rd, a Curry Financial Natural Resource and Curry Problems Issue Consultant, Sid Lichen from Lane County. He was a four-term commissioner there, two-term, I'm sorry, eight years prior Is to that. that. Sid Lichen? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, I thought you said Ed. Uh, yeah, Sid Lichen, but prior to that, he was mayor of Springfield for 10 years. He would work two full days per week for six months, and he would help us come up with a five-year plan. Uh, he's already looking into our budget, so I hope I have a specific or official proposal that I can give you uh, in the next, before the end of January. I could not possibly recommend his expertise, expertise higher, the respect he has around the state, the contacts he has around the state, and um, he was just a... Has he done this for other counties? He's looking actually at uh, Klamath County. They, I got oh, to him He's never first. actually done this, or he's starting well, he, a consulting business. Uh, I don't know is? if he has an official consulting business, but he loves Curry County and will, would love to see if if we could uh, put him to work for our best interest. And uh, so, uh, 
that that's what I'm going to be making a proposal on, and yeah, I have very high hopes that um, we we might go that direction. And I I think it, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Did you have anything else, Louise? You wanted to say? Or? Okay. Um, I need to, I need to just let everyone know that I am going to be attending the AOC uh, meetings. Um, I'm going to uh, be using the grant. AOC has agreed to accept it um, that we have. Um, admi uh, former Administrator Schroeder uh, was was to also use that. Um, so we're going to be able to use that. As far as the travel up there, um, I'll bring my own personal vehicle up there because we don't have a travel policy yet. And I'm not sure if the grant covers the hotel. I think it does. If not, <coughs> I would like to, at a later date, submit that back to the county. Thank you. And so what it sounds like you're requesting to be able to get approved uh, the travel to the AOC uh, conference um, in the next couple of weeks while we work out the travel policy. I think that was already approved. Okay, good. Excellent. Thanks. And then the only other thing I would say is we approved a separation agreement with Schroeder. Today's his last day. We will not be able to have the administrator position effectively ended until the next reading. Um, if you don't have any uh, opposition, you could appoint me the acting interim until we get the thing oh. uh, taken care of, and that's just only, it's just a matter that's of... That's why you get the big okay. bucks. Well, <laughs> otherwise we're in a... Thank you a, very much. We're, we're betwixt and between. Absolutely. Because so, it didn't work out that we got it done today. So thank you very much. Because thank lunch you. is on us, I'll make that motion uh, that we appoint Council Huddle as the actim, acting interim county uh, administrator. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Call for the question. Aye. No. No. Yes, I'm just seeing if you were paying attention. <laughs> All right. This meeting is adjourned. Good meeting, Mr. Chair. I had to vote no. Your vote is your vote, and that's why we have a democracy. Okay. I appreciate your willingness to do We got to start the healing here.